In the mountains of Kashmir, they're clamouring to greet Pakistan's favourite son. Fourteen years ago, he won the World Cup for these fanatical cricket lovers. Given the fervour you'd think it had only just happened, Imran Khan still strides forth as the country's most recognised man. But for all the affection and goodwill, he's haunted by the spectre of personal and professional failure. I had everything. I mean, I still have everything. I think I'm one of the most fortunate people who, whatever he wanted in life, he got. I would like to see Imran as the moral conscience of Pakistan. I think he could do enormous good if he were to do that. The story of life after cricket for Imran Khan is a saga of ambition set in the subcontinent. Pakistan's far north, a spectacular landscape of jagged mountains and deep valleys. Last October saw a huge natural disaster, an earthquake that killed more than 75,000 people. The epicentre, Balakot town, was reduced to rubble. Also badly damaged was the reputation of the military, Pakistan's most pervasive national institution. It receives as much as one third of the national budget and yet failed to act quickly during a time of crisis. It was total chaos. There was no direction, you know, there was no central. What the government should have actually done was to direct this relief effort. Imran Khan was a high-profile face of Pakistan's civilian response. His charity organisation raised millions of dollars worldwide to provide shelter and clothing to victims left stranded by the state. This is as far as the government goes, there's darkness. There's nothing uh, to look forward to. Since we don't know at the moment uh, what, what will happen. Are you the light? Uh, <laughs> once I get into power, that could be a while. <laughs> These people have had their lives turned upside down by catastrophe. But on this day, they're honouring Imran Khan with a cricket match, whether he likes it or not. I have left cricket way behind. You know, for me, it's part of my past, and I never look back in my past. It's a sort of character trait. When I left school, I never wanted to go back. I left university, never wanted to go back. When I stopped playing cricket, I never wanted to go play cricket again. The fielding was a lot smoother than the pitch. Fireworks and a crowd invasion signaled the end of the match and the start of wild celebrations. For Imran Khan, cricket is both a blessing and a burden. It brought him fame and recognition, but he wants to be known for much more. When I became the cricket captain, I couldn't speak to the team directly, I was so shy. I had to tell the manager, I said, listen, can you talk to the, this is what I want to convey to the team. I mean, early team meetings, I used to be so shy and embarrassed, I couldn't talk to the team. And here I'm, uh, now I stand in front of thousands of people and I make speeches and so I, I change my character to suit my mission. His mission is politics. Imran Khan launched his self-styled justice movement 10 years ago. 
He was elected as its sole parliamentarian in 2002, but he's never found a way to convert the public's adoration into votes that would put his party in the political big league. In a country that's been ruled by a succession of dictators and corrupt feudal dynasties, there's very little room for political outsiders, especially champions of radical change. We want a sovereign Pakistan. We do not want our president to be a poodle of George Bush. We want him to, you know, lead this country and give us pride and self-respect and dignity. Number two, we want rule of law in Pakistan. We do not want the ruling elite to be above law. At the moment, there's only one issue to get rid of military dictatorship. Imran wasn't always so concerned about democracy. He was vocal in support of General Pervez Musharraf, who deposed an elected leader nearly seven years ago. The people were seeing darkness all around. We have now shown them light. The main thing was that he wanted to finish sham democracy, quote unquote, and bring in genuine democracy in Pakistan. So here we were thinking, here is a, here's a hero, you know, who wants to bring real democracy in Pakistan. We all supported him. Imran claims he was offered a plum job, Musharraf's prime minister. Why did you turn it down? Because I asked myself a very simple question. Will all these, co the coalition of crooks, will they ever allow a judiciary to be independent? Would Musharraf allow a judiciary to be independent? The answer is no. And what does he do about accountability of corrupt politicians? He aligns himself with the biggest crooks in this country. I mean, these are not just crooks, they're icons of corruption. The perception is uh, largely true that if Musharraf and Musharraf seize power, if Musharraf had offered him the prime ministership of this country, he would have taken it. Well, Imran Khan says he did. He did what? Offering the prime ministership. Well, you have to ask Musharraf whether he did or not. So you can't really take his word for it. Um, Musharraf certainly says this, that uh, he's angry with me because I didn't give him what he wants. Pakistan's political system may not be all that counts against Imran Khan, according to one of the nation's most respected political commentators. People in his own party who worked with him and then left him say he's autocratic, he doesn't listen. And he has a clique of people around him who are chums and buddies. He listens to them, but he doesn't really interact with his own uh, party members. A lot of the Imran Khan story is about backtracking on a lot of things he said earlier, which is why this doesn't inspire people. Okay, last poll, last poll and then Suleiman. Come on, Kasim. This is the private domain of Imran Khan's family. His marriage to Jemima Goldsmith ended two years ago. She now lives in Britain. These days, sons Qasim and Suleiman only come to Dad's house in Pakistan during holidays. Oh, it's only been a year since they've got any had any interest in cricket. Otherwise, if I on television, if I was we were sitting and you know in front of the TV, and if uh, cricket came along, I would have a chorus either side not boring cricket again, so I had to flick the channel again. <laughs> These days, the world's greatest all-rounder only plays the backyard game. They love it here, open spaces. In London, it's not really, it's not the, 
best place for children to grow up in the sense that it's not a very outdoor life. And here, so, you know, it's, a, it's perfect for them. <coughs> Khan says he faced a dilemma and made a brutal choice. Career ambition over marriage. In the sense that I was torn, um, you know, trying to make my marriage work and, and, and you know, trying to give time to politics, and in that it got divided. Certainly, if I wasn't married, I would have been able to give much more time to politics. Nowadays, this is a typical day at the office. He's come to remote rural Pakistan to meet his constituents. These men are complaining to Imran about television reception, but their local member has his eye on the bigger picture. Most Pakistanis resent President Musharraf for supporting America's so-called war on terror. Not far from this community, Pakistan's military has been striking hard against suspected al-Qaeda and Taliban hideouts. The campaign is causing a backlash, a shift in the national mood from secularism to religious conviction by those who believe the war on terror is a war on Islam. And Imran Khan is one of them. Because of this war on Islam and the siege mentality coming in, this fear that the United States is about to destroy our way of life, which is sweeping across everywhere. And the bombing of Afghanistan had a big impact. Afghanistan is very close from here. So it had a big fallout here. That has led to mosques, people going to mosques, more reverting back to, you know, uh, so, so as to speak, closing ranks. But the worst thing is that it is radicalizing our societies. There's a radicalism going on in reaction to what is happening. It's a bizarre transformation. A one-time heartthrob setting himself up as a defender of the faith and the madrasa system of religious schools. Imran claims it fills a void left by a crumbling state education system. Pakistan spends less than 2% of its national budget on public schooling. So, you know, for the poorest of the poor, and, and let me say that almost 40% of the population is below the poverty line. So for them, this is the only way to have at least the children read and write. Imran Khan is not afraid to keep company with people labelled as radicals and he's sympathetic to the resurgent Taliban movement in neighbouring Afghanistan. It's made him a political target. The reason why they call me fundamentalist or anything, because they don't know my religious views, so it's clearly not on what I believe in. It's on my political views. And my political views are for nationalist. I do not believe your country should be uh, bootlicking uh, some superpower. I believe in self-respect and dignity. That, what has that got to do with fundamentalism or so on? You have extremists. Uh, 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 it's like concentrating in the United States on the Ku Klux Klan and saying all Americans are like that. It's exactly what's happening in, uh, in the Muslim world. They concentrate on the fanatics and then brand whole 1.3 billion people with the same brush. Is there a beer or you just have a sock the playboy to Puritan U-turn left many people scratching their heads in wonder. Imran credits a spiritual reawakening towards the end of his cricketing career. That popular perception which is probably about to make you cringe about being the playboy, were you like that before you went through this process? You know, I mean, I was a bachelor, I was playing cricket, uh, I loved life. I still love life. What it does is that it sort of gives you something incredible. It gives you inner peace, contentment, which I actually never had before. It might be military run, but there's still plenty of free expression in Pakistan. Sprouting anti-government rhetoric isn't hard when most people think their president is doing the wrong thing siding with the US. isn't trying to be anti musharraf in this country. It isn't a, you know, it isn't a novel idea. He's still happy sitting 
with the religious parties because they think they're anti-American. But he won't share the platform with the mainstream moderate parties because he thinks that they were corrupt. So, you know, it's... But he's right, isn't he? They are corrupt. Sorry? They are corrupt. Everybody is corrupt. Even the religious parties are corrupt. Even the military is corrupt. Who isn't corrupt in politics? Politics is all about corruption to a greater or lesser extent. Some is more transparent, some is less. But at the end of the day, all power is corrupting. So now, if Imran Khan is going to get into politics, then he's got to learn to live with the fact that there is a trickle-down corruption effect everywhere. Imran Khan may have missed his mark in politics so far, but this is where he's truly at home. We've come to the hospital that Imran built, in a desperately poor nation short on quality medical care. In a country of 166 million people, it's Pakistan's only facility devoted to cancer treatment. They've come from uh, far away and they want tests. Most of the people here are poor and will be treated free of charge. It takes 15 minutes just to get in the front door. Is it always like this? Yes. <laughs> you know, the thing is you can only take about every day seven new patients. There are about 30, 40 new uh, uh, patients which arrive every day. And all those cases outside, all overwhelming, compelling cases? Well, we have to take a decision that which are the patients we take. So we take only patients which are from the first stages of cancer. You know, who we can, who we have a better chance of curing. Imran travelled the country on a fundraising campaign to build the hospital, driven by an experience that changed his life. Well, my mother died of cancer way back in 1985 and it's then that I discovered you know when she was ill that there was no cancer hospital in this country so whereas people like us could afford to take our relatives abroad for treatment uh, for people like this there was nowhere to go the hospital has an international reputation as a cancer research center another is planned for Pakistan's biggest city Karachi but this has a good sort of prognosis, yeah. So, you know, that's they, good news. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, most of the children are. We think, we think, we think they will all uh, survive. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that is the good news. It's not actually that depressing because uh, in children, it's uh, you know you have very good results here. Pakistanis may embrace Imran Khan, the charity worker and sporting hero but they've shown a reluctance to support his political ambition. In cricket, one of the things that you were known for was your discipline and, and knowing when to quit. If politics isn't working for you, when is the time to walk away? When do you decide that you can quit? There's no question of quitting. This is a struggle for life. I mean, when I came into politics, I had decided that I would go to achieve my goals, whatever it took. And I have no fears, you know, I have no fear of dying, of failure, of anything. So that means that for my opponents, I'm very dangerous. But the danger for Imran Khan is that in a country dominated by patronage politics and the military, it's likely he'll never be more than a celebrity outsider. <laughs>